station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston station, I'm ready for the event. ESA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is ESA Jules at ESA s in Rome. We're here with uh, ANSA, El Messaggero, Wyatt, and Azitivu. And I'd give the mic to Enrica Batifolia for the first question. Sorry, how can you hear me? Loud and clear. Benvenuti a bordo. Welcome aboard. Now the mic to Enrica Batifolia from ANSA. Hi, Luca. This is Enrica Battifoglio from ANSA. My first question is this. Your second spacewalk was very adventurous, and now we're trying to understand what happened. But if you were to have the uh, go-ahead for resuming a spacewalk, what would you, what would you do now? Ciao Enrica. Hi Enrica. Welcome aboard. Yes, right now we are still in the uh, troubleshooting phase. We have eliminated a lot of the uh, possible sources of cooling fluid that came into the helmet. So we're proceeding very well. Uh, we're proceeding very well. Chris and I are very ready to resume where we left off. We have all the equipment ready. Therefore, as soon as we receive the okay to continue where we left off, we are ready to resume, the, reconfigure the airlock. The spacesuit is already assembled. We only have to collect from around the station all the various components that we took out the first time that we uh, stowed back in after the interruption. And after that, after a few days, we would be able to go out again, and we would be very happy to be able to, to do so. Well, my second question is a little lighter. I wanted to ask you if you already had the occasion to try Italian food on station together with your colleagues. Well, not only have I already tried it, but it's already run out because when we finished moving all the elements, all the materials from from ATV, Albert Einstein, when we took all the materials inside, I was in charge of, of moving this equipment called Loadmaster. So I wanted to thank the uh, crew by uh, offering an Italian dinner. So practically, in that occasion, there were six of us. I offered a first course, a second course. So I utilized almost my entire ration of Italian food. Fortunately, there's still a little bit left that I'm going to show you. I still have one lasagna. Perhaps I'll have it on a Sunday so that I can remind myself how to eat in Italy on Sunday. And then I still have a tiramisu. I still have a tiramisu that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to eat because Karen is really uh, enamored of it. So, so perhaps I will give it to her since she liked it so much. Hi, Luca. This is pa Paolo Ricibitti from Messaggero. I wanted to ask you, what did the two spacewalks add to your personal search for the infinite? Well, it's, it's hard to answer this question. I, I think that the search for the infinite is, is like infinite itself. It, it, it should never end, and it's important that it should be that way. So now, if nothing else, they increase my appetite because I have seen what it's possible to see on orbit, what you can see when you leave the station ahead, this extraordinary opportunity. So if nothing else, I'm even hungrier 
here for these visions and these experiences. Therefore, definitely, they gave me the, the will, the charge to be able to do well and to continue in my research and possibly repeat experiences such as these. On the space station, there are Europeans, Japanese, Russians, Americans. The teamwork is so essential that, that it, is it easy to look at the Earth without borders the way you've told us? It's a vision. It's a little bit of a Doppler vision in the sense that here on board we are one team, one crew, we're working towards the same goal, research, technology and science. Therefore, we're all explorers in the spacecraft and we all think about the future, we all look forward. And then we have this other incredible occasion to look outside the window and look at the world. So from here, like you said, it's true, there are no borders. For 400 kilometers altitude, only the highest mountains have a relief, but valleys, rivers, everything looks like a continuum. The countries particularly the, the internal countries in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, United States, the central states that don't have a coastline are indistinguishable one from the other because these borders that we have created, that, that we have come up with, cannot be seen from up here. Hi, Luca. Sandro Iannacone from Wired. The first question that I wanted to ask you is about the, the future that you will uh, spend here on board. So after breaking some records, like being the first Italian to walk in space, what other records do you want to achieve while you're up there? Thank you for your question. Thank you for giving me a record. I, I'm not here to break any records. We are, we're not here looking for the Guinness or for an honorary mention. We're here to work. So I would say that it's not important to be the first, the last. It's important to be someone who has done a good work. And I hope to be able to be in that category. Then obviously here on station, for me, everything is a first time. So. In, in a little while, I will see the HTV, the, the Japanese spacecraft, which will arrive this week, and I will see it, a grapple for the first time. I will not be the main operator, but hopefully, if there will be other occasions, I would like to be able to, to execute a grapple maneuver. It would be the first time for a European, but simply to be able to, to have this experience, I think it would be important to have this ability. And then for the future, like you said, the future is open. I, I'm 36, so I, I still expect many possibilities, a lot of new things. For the months that I have left here, I would like to be able to continue to have a, a good experience, a positive experience, like I have so far, and then to continue to perform my job well. Yes, in fact, the, uh, the second question was for the future further down the line. For all the uh, ambitious missions, such as the conquest of Mars or building an uh, a spacecraft that will uh, maneuver asteroids, if you were to choose, which one would you like to participate in and in what role? Well, I think all these missions are fascinating, each in its own way. Of course, the idea of going to Mars and colonizing it is, is a, an extremely fascinating idea, very intriguing. And the idea of going with a spacecraft to capture an asteroid and bringing it back is, is something that right now sounds like science fiction, even if possible. I would volunteer for any of these explorations, uh, going to the moon, going back to the moon for a colonization program. I would volunteer for any of these because this is my job. I am an astronaut. so. 
alla, alla fine eh, quello quello At the end of the day, what I want to do is to support the program. There are international agencies, like the Italian Space Agency, which has a policy that creates very precise. So my job is to support that policy with the uh, Italian Space Agency and the European Space Agency. But in reality, the, the Space Agency all are working together. So, so in the end, I will follow what the world agencies will decide is the most important and direct way to develop, and I will be happy to be on board of any spacecraft. Hi, Luca. Ma Manuela Proietti from Alitivo. I would like to ask our Luca some, to reveal some secrets of a space fo reporter, photographer. Usually things are moving and you're still, whereas here you're the one who's moving while the Earth is beneath you. So what techniques do you use and what's it like to be able to see Earth from up there. Hi, Manuela. Welcome aboard. The interesting thing, in my opinion, is that I don't feel like a photo reporter and I don't feel like I'm particularly good either. On Earth, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, video and photography equipment. So I'm discovering this wonderful hobby and this fantastic opportunity to be able to photograph such, as, such a beautiful subject as the Earth which is always perfect, always different, and yet, in a manner of speaking, always in front of us, with some details that we cannot see the first time around. I'm very lucky because here on station we have some fantastic equipment uh, at every astronaut's disposal. So here, for example, I have a, a camera out of the ones that we have available for astronauts, which has one of my favorite lenses, which is a 400 millimeter lens, which is a lens that I use to zoom on very small details to be able to enhance the beauty of them. Sometimes I think that it's, it's not a great idea because you lose the, uh, the concept of, of ensemble that you can see from the window. However, sometimes some details are worth capturing. So the best way, the technique that I utilize is to snap a lot of photos and then choose the ones that come out better. And then the other lens that I like to use is just to give this ensemble effect, which is this camera with a 50 millimeter lens. So this gives a good idea of the view the way we see it from the cupola. So these are perhaps the uh, most inspiring views. You can see the curvature of the Earth, the atmosphere, and then blackness right past the atmosphere, this absolute black that may be scary, which to me is fascinating. So perhaps this is the lens that most of all gives the best idea, the most immediate idea of what it's like to be on the space station and see the uh, Earth going beneath us at 400 kilometers per hour. Thank you, Luca. My second question is this. If you were assigned to a second mission, what would you leave of your, actual, of your current equipment and what would you bring with you next time? A great question. I realized that I brought with me a lot of things that I don't need. Also because here on station there's seriously everything. So little utensils that I brought with me that I realize I don't need. Also, a lot of food specific that I ordered, in reality, here on station, you don't really need 
cibi così particolari. Foods that are so specific. Sure, a, a little bit to remind yourself of your own country, that's fine, but, but really I realized that you can live in, in a very Spartan way. If, you, if I were to have this experience again, I would try to have this little experiment to try to live with the for, with a, as, as little as I can, as the colonists one day will do when they explore new planets, they will really need to be able to live with just a little bit. If I sh were allowed to bring something different next time, the, the, the only thing that I really miss right now are my daughters. So, so maybe it would be asking too much, but uh, I would love to have my family with me. That would really be a dream. I know that it cannot be realized, but I know that maybe in the future, the colonists that will leave for exploration to further planets will have this amazing opportunity. Thank you, Luca. On behalf of everyone, I would like to ask you if you could demonstrate the uh, weightless condition and something else. After a couple of months of uh, weightlessness, do you miss anything or do you miss anything from World with Gravity? The only thing that I, that here on orbit, is, is a problem without weight is the idea that somebody, someone like me is losing everything. I'm already, I'm already disorganized on Earth. My wife knows very well that sometimes she has to find me, help, help me find my keys, my glasses, because I have the terrible habit of putting everything everywhere. So here in station, if you're not really methodical, it's really easy to lose everything. Because not only is it possible to put something on, on a wall, on, on the ceiling, but it's also easy for it to come off and fly somewhere. So perhaps that's the only part of weightlessness that can be a little problematic, but for everything else, that gravity, I don't miss it at all. Enrica is coming back. Hi again, Luca. In a little bit, on a space station with a Japanese spacecraft, a new colleague will arrive, a little particular, a little robot. If I'm not mistaken, there's another one, an American robot on board. How do you, how do you think about robots in space for the future? Uh, just today, Robonaut is helping us with an experiment in the uh, American lab. It's working with, with a special set of instruments, which we uh, put in front of him, so that on Earth he can be controlled to perform some actions. The little Japanese robot that is arriving with the HTV, I haven't been trained on it, but my colleague Karen Nyberg, um, is going to be responsible for the experiment with this robot. For the future, I see very well integration between robots and men. Uh, particularly robots, perhaps not humanoid, but like rovers that can be independent, but also controlled by spacecraft to allow a more safe environment before landing. So I think this integration is already ongoing and it will be indispensable for the future. Hi, Luca. Paolo, again. You're a pilot, a test pilot, so you're used to flying at twice the speed of sound. So, but with spacewalks, you're going at 23 times the speed of sound. So what, what sensations does that give you? Well, they're completely different emotions. The majority of my, of my career, I've flown 
on planes, on, on fighter planes at, at low altitude. So flying at low altitude, very low altitude, the, the sensation of speed is extremely strong. It's something that it gives you a, a huge adrenaline shot and it's an exhilarating sensation. Here, outside the station, it, it's a completely different world. It, it's a mental status. It's completely different. The risks are different. The, the necessity of, of thinking and reasoning has completely different times than flying at high speed. So there are emotions that I set aside that I can then use in, in other similar occasions. But for an extravehicular activity, you don't perceive this, this sensation of speed unless you look down on Earth running by you. The only sensation is, is that of feeling like you're falling in. Honestly, I didn't feel it. I, I felt well from the beginning, but with respect to the space station, an astronaut is completely still. You're moving with the uh, space station. So two different completely different worlds. Thank you, Station. That concludes the event. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you.